Maybe you can start by telling us why you chose uh, Google Web Toolkit for your project. I think we chose Google Web Toolkit because uh, it's open source, yeah. which is very important for developers, right? They, they want to have, they don't want to be locked into any particular right. vendor, and open source is growing. And the other fact that we chose Google Web Toolkit is leverages on a lot of Google's domain knowledge. Okay. And the other thing that is really key to us that we had a lot of problems was uh, browser incompatibility. So what will happen is Naveen will be coding, or Vikram will be coding on one version of Firefox, and I will be debugging on IE, and then he'll fix that bug, and then it breaks on Firefox, and then vice versa, yeah. you know, keeps going that whole round. Sure. So one feature could take us like days oh, wow. to fix. Yeah, but you can with, easily waste time on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so with GWT, which my colleagues will talk more about, it actually solves a lot of those problems, right? We can actually code once, deploy it, test in a few browsers, and this usually works fine. Okay. And then we can go next to features. So it allows us to focus on the app and the feature set and the UI experience without needing to worry about stupid stuff like, okay, does it break in IE, does it break in Firefox, does it break in Safari, and things like that. Okay. Is that where the Google domain knowledge comes in, or what did you mean by that? I think Google, uh, Vikram well, always yeah. tells me, yeah, you know, Google is probably the best web application company in the world, yeah. and we agree. And over the years, right, you guys have built so many web applications, my guess is that's why you guys created Google Web Toolkit, right? To, because you face all these problems. So that is how we are standing on the shoulders of giants, right? We leverage on your domain knowledge with respect to creating web applications. So, so to be specific about domain knowledge, uh, very simple things like the way GWT loads, it uses iframes, which uh, is the way they've done it, is it speeds up JavaScript loading. Then, then there are certain tools in GWT that allow, uh, for example, when you want to use a lot of small images across your website, you end up having to you know, do that manually. But in GWT, you can actually create a resource. You put them in a resource, and when, the, uh, when your GWT code is compiled for deployment, those images actually combine together into one image. Uh, automatically and you know and then positioned using CSS through your codes which is great speeds up loading and makes your app a lot more responsive and basically you're everyone is developing in one programming language Java but yeah. you get you get basically six different versions for each browser each language each very basically each and every different combination you get a you get a fully working version and that really helps you know with browser compatibilities you know you, you know, you get the fastest performance for each browser. So that's the coolest thing. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, slowing your code down just to handle one IE bug here or there. And also, GWT is, it doesn't really have a GWT part that loads. It's what, what is compiled, the output is what you get. It's the final product. And uh, that actually is great because your code, not only can you improve your code, but every time GWT improves, the, com your, the, uh, the compilation will make your uh, final result better. So your code improves even without you really doing anything, the final result, which is really great. And like Naveen said, having Java on the back end, Java from the front end, really speeds up things. You know, your chain of thought is not broken, and uh, you just get better in you know, one combined platform as opposed to you know, figuring out multiple things. Okay, that's a great story. So you mentioned six different uh, versions. Does that mean you as a developer now have six versions to, to, to manage and deal with? No, you only have one because you're writing everything in Java. So you're maintaining one code base in Java, but your compiled output is JavaScript, HTML, all this stuff. That stuff, you know, if you've ever looked at it, it looks like, you know, you know, gibberish almost. You probably couldn't even follow it if you were you know, even the smartest guy in the world. But we don't care because that's just the output of what we've, uh, you know, what we've already written. So for us, we're just writing one code base, working on one code base in Java, and the six different, you know, you can think of them almost like six different binary executables that you would get out of uh, any comp uh, any compiler if you're cross compiling over several different architectures. So okay. it actually compiles a different version for each browser, and it auto, you know, figures out which one needs to be downloaded. So which is great. It's, it sounds like the, uh, the the source code is really optimized for the developer. You become really productive, mm -hmm. but the, but the output is optimized for the browser and for the user. Mm -hmm. So an IE user only gets an IE download. Correct. Um, the Firefox user in English gets different code than say a Firefox user um, in yeah. Japanese. Yes, absolutely. That's okay. That's, that's, right that's great. And I also want to add something. The GWT allowed us to have internationalization like in a few days. 
Okay. Oh, we want to support okay. Unicode for Japanese, Hindi, on social walk. And also, it took us very quickly. One added benefit is we went mobile. Mobile web, right in a week, also. So all these are the reason why you should use it. Mobile web team. wasn't out of the box, but the time to develop it was really short. I think it must have been 10% of the time it took to develop the rest of the application. So. One of the, the beauties is that since you're just working with Java code, you know, manipulating Java code is pretty, you know, pretty straightforward once you've written it. You can just say, okay, let me make a slightly different version of the same Java code that maybe is more optimal for the mobile interface. But you know, so one thing that really is great about that is that you're just still you're still maintaining this one Java code, and, and the beauty is is that you can even reuse code. You know, sometimes we have code that's you know not necessarily Backend per se, it's just code that's not that doesn't display anything visual. It's code that interacts with our uh, backend, uh, you know, AJAX services, things like that. We can share that code. We have code that just stores data, you know, um, stuff that basically marshals in JavaScript objects, things like that. That we can just you know use that same code. We don't have to you know build a mobile version of that or anything like that. Okay, so you really have code reuse between the, the client and the server. Yeah, and I, I also wanted to make this point that, um, that there is a cycle in development that's kind of important to most developers. They do this all day where they make a change, they want to test it, then they make another change. or So that, that cycle needs to be really fast for a developer to be comfortable in an environment. And uh, the Quit environment, the plugins that they have for Eclipse and stuff actually allow you to do that. So if we change Java code, I don't have to hit a compile button and then wait around until my whole code is compiled. I actually make a j change in Java. I just go up to web browser and I just hit reload on the browser and the change is displayed. So it's it's almost you know in time compilation or something. I'm not entirely clear on how the backend works, but it works great. So okay. Um, did you uh, add any extensions to GWT that are specific to to Social Walk? Uh, yeah, I mean one of the one of the things that from our old JavaScript programming days and even from our old sort of server-side programming days, we used a, we use a concept called the deferred execution. So one of the things that we needed to do was we basically needed to duplicate that same functionality in GWT. Uh, deferred execution, if many of you aren't familiar, is a programming model where uh, callbacks are basically added on to certain uh, events. The programming model is called asynchronous programming. It's, uh, it's very you, you pretty, if you're familiar with Twisted Python, which is a great networking uh, sort of stack for Python developers, it's very familiar to you. And the beauty is, is that you, know, you don't have to worry about when something happens when you to uh, add the callback. You just add the callback, and then whenever it completes, that callback is executed. It's guaranteed. So we basically did not have that functionality originally in GWT, and now, we have, and now we've added it. And we probably will be able to contribute it back because it's open source, so it's another great thing. Okay. So much of the web is asynchronous that it really helped us, you know, having that kind of um, functionality where we can chain callbacks or chain deferred objects together, which is which is helpful. Okay. What are the uh, maybe some of the features that are up and coming uh, that uh, haven't landed yet into it with distribution, but that you've had a preview of uh, watching the uh, subversion? code come by? What are so the things you're excited we, about? We actually tend to live at the bleeding edge of things. We use the trunk, so we already experience a lot of the new features that uh, we've seen. One of the newest features that we've seen is the uh, client bundle, uh, which is a great uh, system that allows us to do sort of uh, resource allocation based on uh, standard Java development or standard, uh, C, you know, almost like writing CSS that can be browser specific that's only loaded uh, for each browser, just like our JavaScript. So we use those uh, things as well already. Uh, one of the things that we're really interested in is this code splitting, uh, which is developer-guided code splitting, which is a great way for us to break up our application when you know to basically speed up loading times. You know, one of the things that we worry about is that we're always concerned about performance. We don't want our users to experience a basically a horrible experience where he's waiting a few seconds for his app to load. We want it to load very quickly, and the user can just use the application. And we. With Wit's philosophy is almost aligned with that, so we want to actually take advantage of those features. I think I'll add one more thing to encourage people to use Quip. Right? As developers, I think what you want is uh, documentation and stuff. But and so from our end, we have benefited a lot from GWT today. 
right? And what we would love to do soon with uh, code.google.com is we would love to uh, contribute articles of what we found are the issues that we have faced or the new paradigm of programming we have used with GWT. So, Fred, look out for more articles from okay. us. I look forward to it. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for, for coming in. Thank and talking you. To us today. Thank you. Thank you.